Good morning, afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. Today, let's go over elevator pitches. What are they and what makes a good one? A common question that arises in either a job interview or just discussions in general is, tell me about yourself. So how do you tell others about the work that you do? How do you sell yourself as a teacher? An elevator pitch aims to answer this question by forcing the speaker to be brief but effective. In other words, if you were to get into the elevator with, say, a important official from the Department of Education, and the person asked you to tell you about yourself, what would you tell them? How can you describe yourself as a teacher in one minute or less? The amount of time that it would take for an elevator to climb 10 floors. According to these guys, AJ and Johnny from the Art of Charm podcast, an effective elevator pitch should contain three essential elements. Number one, credentials. What makes you qualified to do what you do? What relevant education or experience do you have as it pertains to your job? Number two, affinity. Beyond a regular paycheck, why do you do what you do? What do you want and need from it? This really comes to your internal values. And finally, value. How can you be of service to other people? What benefits do you bring to other people in the course of your work? How do you contribute to your school and to your students? One question I get often is the difference between affinity and value. And one challenge around that is the dictionary definition of the word value in its noun form. There's two things. Number one, the regard that something is held to deserve, the importance, worth, or usefulness of something. So when AJ and Johnny talk about value, this is what they mean. What worth or what benefit do you bring to your job, to your coworkers, to your students? Number two definition of value is one's judgment of what is important in life. This is what they mean when you talk about our core values. So this is what they mean by affinity. The second definition of value. What is important to you? Why are you passionate or why do you enjoy the work that you do outside of just receiving money? Let's look at a few examples of some short elevator pitches, and let's see how well they convey their credentials, their affinity, and their value. Number one, let's take a listen. Well, my name is Abigail Colley. I'm a freshman in the School of Foreign Service, originally from Richmond, Virginia. Um, I plan on majoring in science, technology, and international affairs, because in high school I had a really cool internship working with the energy infrastructure company that services much of the mid-Atlantic and it's called Dominion Power and I was really interested in engineering because of that and international affairs is something that I've been passionate about since high school because I did Model UN. So some of the clubs that I'm involved in here include the International Relations Club, the Breaking the Bubble Club which is really just a fun club, a way to get out of get out of Georgetown, do something fun off campus, and Georgetown Scholarship Program, which is more of an organization than a club. And of course, I also work at the Career Center as a career assistant. So, not bad. She does speak rather confidently with a limited use of filler words. She doesn't seem too nervous when she's giving this pitch. So, credentials. Yeah, she's very good at sharing the accomplishments, education, and experiences that she has that pertains to her goals, which is working in international relations. She's also very good at sharing her affinity. She talks about her passion for international relations and why she enjoys doing that work. It's clearly a big factor in her life. However, when I listen to this, I don't necessarily hear a statement of value. What does she bring that she wants to contribute to the international relations community? What will she do in order to help others in their workplace and the people that she is set to serve? So she could have done a little bit better in sharing value.
This is an example that I will call the CV trap. She does a very good job at listing many different education degrees and club participation and internships. She lists it off as if it's a CV, but really she should be sharing a little bit more, not about what these accomplishments are, but what she can use those accomplishments to do. What are her goals in working in international relations? Okay, we have another elevator pitch right here. Let's take a listen. Hi, I'm Andrew Puglisi, and I have my master's degree from Hofstra University in Industrial and Organizational Psychology, and I primarily work in the selection process. If you're looking to improve your organization's selection process, I would be your guy. I can conduct job analysis, validate selection tests through the assistance of subject matter experts, and I always back my recommendations with industry-wide best practices and statistical justification. I work hard to ensure that the results of my work fit your organizational needs and the kind of culture that you're looking to create moving forward. So in this one, I love Andrew's enthusiasm. He definitely picks up his emotional energy and that's very important for an elevator pitch. You want to sound like you are happy to talk about yourself. Who wants to listen to sad people all day? Pretty much no one. So when you give your elevator pitch, remember to bring some positive energy. As for his credentials, yep, yeah, he's very quick with that. He graduated from Hofstra University in Industrial Organization Management. And he's very good here at displaying the value. He spells out very specifically what he will do to help companies improve their organizational management and their selection process. He gives a step-by-step -step specific example of what tangible results he can bring from his work. However, what I don't hear a lot of is the affinity. What draws him to the field of organizational management? He doesn't really bring much of himself into this. He sort of pitches it like a service, but in an elevator pitch, you're also pitching yourself as a person. And we don't really hear a lot of Andrew's personality or his driving force behind why he does what he does. So another tip when doing your elevator pitch is remember to share yourself. You're not just pitching a job or an idea. You are pitching yourself as a person with hopes and dreams and passions. So let yourself shine. Okay, one more. Here we have Andrea. Let's see what Andrea has to say. Hello, my name is Andrea Fitzer. I am studying marketing at the University of Texas at Dallas. I am a member of the American Marketing Association and Alpha Kappa Psi, both of which are dedicated to shaping future business leaders. I hope to incorporate my business knowledge into consumer trend analysis and strengthening relationships among consumers as well as other companies. I am savvy, social, and principled and have exquisite interpersonal communication skills. I know that I can be an asset in any company and or situation and I hope that you will consider me for an internship or job opportunity. Thank you so much. Overall, pretty good. Once again, she comes across as very personable and kind and very upbeat, a very positive personality. So credentials, yep, she studies marketing at the University of Texas at Dallas. Very, very succinct. She talks about a couple of clubs that she's in. And even more specifically, she explains how those clubs contribute to her professional development. However, when I listen to for her affinity or her value, it's there, kind of, but it could be a little bit more specific. For example, she lists off three adjectives. She's savvy and she has excellent interpersonal communication skills, which sounds good, but is a little bit non-specific. She could stand to zero in on just one of those ideas, but rather give a more specific example about why she enjoys what she does. Why does she want to get into marketing? Same thing for the value. I want to drive customer engagement. I know I'll be an asset to any company. Again, you're not an asset, you're a person. And I think that she could be a lot more specific in what it means to really be an asset to a company. What will she want to do specifically in order to help that company culture thrive and succeed? Specific is special. If you can give more particular details that pertain to yourself, 
your elevator pitch will be a lot more emotionally compelling. Let me give this a try this time and see if I can try to capture some credibility, affinity, and value. Hello, my name is Ian Schneider. I hold a bachelor's degree from the University of Kentucky in linguistics, and I have been a teacher in South Korea for three years and I currently work at the Jola Namdo International Education Institute. I believe that education starts when there's a foundation of trust and comfort built between the instructor and the trainee. So in class, I really make an effort to build a positive classroom culture by sharing ample appreciation and acknowledging contributions from trainees whenever possible. I also have a deep interest in flipped learning. So I really enjoy creating lecture videos that I can share outside of class so that trainees can study the concepts at their own pace and then come into class, we can have a lot more engaging discussions and lessons. I've helped many Korean teachers in the past develop their listening, speaking, and conversational skills, while also helping them develop more user-friendly online classrooms. I've helped people in the past, and I would love to help you now. Cheers. Okay, so I cheated a little bit. With the magic of editing, I could take a bit of a longer pause. However, if I practice that more times, I'm sure that I could get it down. So what do you think? Do you think that I effectively shared my credentials, my affinity, and my value? Let me know in class next time. I wish you the best of luck in working on your own elevator pitches, and I look forward to seeing you in class next time. Until then, cheers.